All right, ladies and gentlemen, hello. We're going to talk about problems that involve displacement with a constant acceleration. So when we're looking at these type of problems, and here's the equation, you notice acceleration is not a part of this, but we're going to have two different ve uh, velocities. We've got time and we've got x. And what we're doing is that we're assuming that the acceleration is constant, but we really don't need it at the moment. And why is because this right here, this is going to tell us, so one half, this part of the equation, Vf plus Vi, is basically the average velocity. An average. We have initial velocity, we have the final velocity, and together, divide by two, and we have the velocity average. This means that vi could be zero, or it could be any other velocity that we have. It doesn't matter. So we take this velocity, multiply by time, we're going to get the distance the object travels, the displacement. So with this, and let me change my pen color because this light blue is not cutting it. There we go. So what we have is that this is x, which is displacement, is in meters. Velocity, meters per second, and course time is in seconds. And we're going to use these three variables for, for mostly for most of this chapter and this unit. So let's look at an example problem. Let's see what we can do with this. The device uses highly compressed air to accelerate small metal discs to supersonic speeds. We have this disc, oh, which is at rest. I'm going to align this undergoes a uniform acceleration for this amount of time, 0.91 seconds, at which point it reaches its top speed. If the disc travels this amount of distance, we want to, in this time, what we want to know is final speed. So if we look at our equation, look at the data we have, the equation we're going to use, again, is delta x, is equal to 1 half or 0.5 times Vf plus Vi, and that's times the change in time. So let's go ahead. We look at x, Vf, Vi, and the change in time. Come back up here. So here we have a time. Undergoes a uniform acceleration of 9.91 seconds. We're going to assume that start initially arrests. When we start, time is zero, and we continue for 0.9 seconds. So our time, change in time, is 0 0.910 seconds. Now we already talked about what initial velocity is. This is our initial velocity at rest. So this is zero meters per second. Our final velocity, we don't know. So that's what we're looking for. What is x? 7.19 kilo kilometers. There we have the travel. This is our displacement. 7.19 kilometers. I'm going to say convert because we need to have it in meters per second. So x, 7.19 kilometers. Down here, I'm just going to put 1,000 meters for 1 km. That's going to be 7190, 7,190 meters. And that is my displacement. Let's look over here. Here's our equation. This is what we're going to use. We're looking for Vf. Now, we've got something that's going to help us. Notice that vi is zero. This goes away. So we're going to rewrite this equation. One half vf plus delta t times delta t, sorry. So it's multiplication. So now we can put all the, everything in. So we're looking for vf. So divide both sides by time. So delta x over delta t is equal to one half vf. 
So divide both sides by t. Then multiply by both sides by 2. So 2 times delta x over delta t gives me the final velocity. So I'm going to move it over here. We got 2 times 7,190 divided by 0 0.91 seconds. And that will give me my final velocity. And that will, if I get my calculator out, 2 times 7190 equals, then divide by 0.91. I have a velocity of 15,000 and 8,000 meters per second. That is very, very fast. And this is your final answer. All right. I hope this helps. This is the end.